Hey everybody, uh, welcome to episode four here on penetration testing with Kelly Linux. And you know, you guys have spoken and you're the boss. So we're gonna be doing Keoptrix level one in this video. So this is gonna be a full walkthrough. We're gonna talk all things Keoptrix, we'll set it up. So we'll download it, we'll set it up, uh, and then we'll begin our port scanning, our enumeration concepts, uh, and then the exploitation. So I thought this can be a fun way to do a bit of introduction into penetration testing. You're gonna see all aspects of port scans to enumerating the host, uh, to firing up um, you know, Metasploit, looking for the exploits, downloading the exploits, compiling them, running the exploits against the host. Uh, any ways that we can start doing enumeration specifically on that host. So when we get into the more depths of enumeration, doing some more tactical, um, you know, malware or exploit creation, etc. You know, we're going to start looking at the foundations, and then we're going to look at the expert and more advanced level side of things as well. So, you know, this is a level one, so it's very basic, it's very simple, easy, uh, and then we'll look at some more advanced stuff in the next coming videos as well. So, um, let's download it, let's set it up, and let's get started with our penetration testing on this episode around Keoptrix. All right, guys, I'm going to stop my recording, and then I'm just going to flip over to another screen, and I'll speak to you guys from there. All right, cool. So here is my setup. Um, I've currently downloaded Keoptrix. Uh, so it's already running in my lab environment. Um, so I'm just gonna show you what I've done and how I've set it up. So I've just basically gone to, you know, to Google and you know, I've just typed in Keoptrix level one, gone to vonhub.com, that's the main release from there. And then I've just downloaded it from uh, the main source page. So, you know, there's three links here. You can download it from any one of those. Uh, like I've just downloaded the RAR, I've ex um, extracted the RAR, put into a location, and then I've got the information here. So this is what you have to do. So just go into either VirtualBox, so I've got um, VMware, VMware Workstation. You can just go ahead and download. Uh, the, I think there's a free version of this. I might be mistaken. I'm not too sure if there is a free, uh, free version, but there should be, or there probably is. Uh, or the other one is the VirtualBox, and that's free. So you can just go ahead and download VirtualBox. Uh, and then you can just put that on there. That's just a hypervisor for you to run the virtual machines on uh, on that platform. So download that, you know, go through the setup. I'm not going to do that in this video because I already have it set up just for time's sake. But if you need help with uh, setting all that up, if you want me to do a walkthrough with VirtualBox and setting up Keoptrix inside there, just let me know and I can go ahead and do that for you guys. Um, so having said that, that's already set up here. So all I've done is go file, import it. So I've got to open up a file. Uh, I've gone to my location where I've extracted the file. So here's the extracted file, the file uh, level one, and then that's just the VMK image that you just have to uh, open, and that's it. So you open that up. It does the installation already for you. You just you literally do not need to do anything. Uh, all it's already pre uh, configured with errors and that side of things. And when it when it launches, it tells you, you know, um, I can't see if I can zoom into this. I uh, don't think I can get into that. Maybe we'll click this on. There we go. I think that's as best as we're going to get this. But um, yeah, it's basically just saying a couple of things. So you're at this login page, and it's saying now to you know to break it. So let's get access to it somehow. Um, and yeah, nothing else you need to do. You set it up. Uh, my machines are set up in another way, so I had to do a bit of uh, manual configuration here because I've got another lab environment set up on here. Um, but that's, you know, you don't need to worry about that. So just set it up, make sure Linux is on the same network with that. So when you're testing it or it's on the same virtual machine, so if you're running VMware Workstation, you have Kali Linux set up here, make sure they can both talk to each other because that's going to spring up onto the same network for you to attack it as well. But you know, if you need help setting it up, let me know, I can create a video around that, or if we can do a live stream and I can walk you guys through setting it up with VirtualBox or Beam or Workstation if you have any issues. So just let me know in the comments uh, and then we'll go from there. So here we are, so we're presented with this screen, um, you know, it's saying to do, it's broken, it's vulnerable, this is a vulnerable system. Do not run this OS in a production environment, nor should you give the system access to the outside world, the internet or interwebs. Yes, very fun. So let's begin. So guys, just give me a few seconds because this is running on a different machine. I have to switch over to my Kali Linux machine on another box. Um, so I'm just gonna stop my screen share and then I'll share from 
uh, from another machine in just a second. Okay, there we go. So now I'm at the, uh, obviously at my command, command line here on my Kali Linux machine. Uh, I've got Keoptrix running already in the background of the other machine. Um, so let's do a couple of things. So one, I don't know what IP address it's picked up. So for us to even pick an IP address, we can do a couple of things, right? We can do a quick port scan of the entire network uh, to pick it up or a very common one, we can just do a quick net discover, which basically sends out an ARP request out to the entire network. So let's do that and see what that comes back with. Uh, one, dot. Now I'm not sure what network I'm on, I've got one. So one, okay, cool. So let's go back there and do a net discover. So net discover again, just looks at the, just sends out a broadcast ARP request. So the ARP just says, hey, what's on the network? Um, and it, discovers it that way, right? So any device that responds to the ARP message, the ARP, ARP broadcast message that goes out, uh, it's gonna respond. So let's just do a quick uh, flood out to these guys and see who responds. Alternatively, we can do a quick Nmap scan. So if we can do a quick uh, port scan, so let's go Nmap 10, one, two, one, one, two, slash 24. Okay, it's almost done. Wow, I'm surprised that's still running. I'm just going to cancel that and I'll run that again. Okay, so that's why like it's come back and that's fine. So let's see. So that's definitely not Keoptrix. Um, I think this may be 104 uh, or potentially, no, that's not that one. That's my other machine. So in this example, my Keoptrix machine has picked up an IP address of 104 uh, on this network. So this looks like that's the Keoptrix machine. It's a shame that this hasn't worked. This is just like a little up, bit of messages that come up. I wonder why that's not coming through. Let's try something else. Let's try the interface and see if this works. Tech I for interface, Ethernet zero. Uh, let's try the range command again. It's really strange. It's, I don't know why it's not populating. If it doesn't populate, that's okay. We can uh, we'll continue on because we've already done the port scan. So that's identified our host. Oh, it's not giving us anything. I'm going to turn that down because I could probably stop the recording. Okay. 
interesting. Invalid, why is it invalid? Should be better this way. I'm not sure if this will work. Next one. No, it doesn't seem to like it. I don't know what's going on with it, but that's okay. We've done our port scan, so we've done a, a no ping request out to that, that subnet. So that should have identified everything that's on that subnet anyway. So it looks like that my Keoptrix has picked up that 104 address. So that's okay. So let's continue on from here and then we can continue on. So um, from here, what's the next logical step for us to do? So we've done a quick port scan on our network. Uh, from here, I would actually port scan again now this guy. So I'd do a more of a, a stage scan um, or more of an aggressive scan, depending on how we want to go. So let's do that. So uh, let's clear the screen. So we've noted 104 being that host. So let's go nmap, tag T4, tag A. Um, we don't know if we let's do a stage scan, right? So T4, like we've always done. Uh, let's go 192.168.1.1.0, which is the host. Okay, cool. So it's a really responsive. Let's come back. So we know that's on there. So let's go tag A, tag P for the ports. So let's go 22. Let's look at 80. Let's look at the 111, 139, 443, and 1024. Let's see what's on there as well. So hopefully it'll give us more information on those ports. And then we can go and see what else we can do. I'm just going to have a quick sip of water, guys. How are we doing? Okay, it's almost done. So a couple of things that I can see that's going on anyway. So we've got SSH services that are running. We've got a, a web server that's potentially there. RPC is running, NetBIOS, obviously HTTPS, uh, and then some sort of KDM is running on 1024 as well. Um, from here, I, I'd say there's some sort of SMB share that's probably running somewhere. Looks like it's a Windows box and so NetBIOS. Um, so what I might tend to do next is see if I can do uh, a quick scan for the open NetBIOS name server and see if we can locate that uh, either through TCP IP over the TCP IP network. Um, the next step then logically as well, I'll start enumerating SSH and see if we can maybe potentially brute force it uh, if it's easy credential access or any uh, no credential access to any SMB shares which we can try. Um, so we've got an SSH 2.92, SSH keys, so web server is running Apache 1.320. So we're gonna have a look at exploits here. So I'd maybe research Apache 1.3.0, you know, 1.3.20, um, and actually see if there's any known exploits around that. And I think we'll do that. I think that's probably one issue around that is this might SSL we're gonna continuously see, uh, that's gonna be a big issue there. Um, what else we got, RPC info, that's okay, 139. So this is a Samba share that's running as well. So this will be pretty interesting here to see if there's any other share access. So if we can access the share through SMB, uh, so I might even spray uh, the SMB share and see if we can get access you know, to any shares that are potentially open or uh, available for us. Um, what else can we do? Let's, uh, okay. Let's just try something really quickly. So we've got a web service. So a, a logical way that, to potentially do this is a top-down approach. You can probably start with most critical services or ports that are open. Um, 
something that I just want to see really quickly is if I can curl the page down and see if it's uh, giving us the right information. So I'm just going to go curl HTTP the port 80. So uh, that work? Want to kill the whole site? Oh, page. Okay. So this just killed the the initial page, the the web page that's on the web server itself. So I just want to see if there's any information on here that you know there could be an administrator details or you know comments of some sort. Or here we go, some sort of version if you upgrade it from Red Hat six point two. Um, just anything that could potentially be on there. It doesn't look like there's anything there. Since your email address, that's fine. Um, that's okay. Let's maybe do a directory attack and see if we can start enumerating uh, any other directories on the on the um, on the actual web client itself. So I'm just going to use Durbuster really quickly, uh, and then I'm just going to pop in the IP address of our host. So one hundred one six eight dot one dot one zero four port eighty, and then go faster, and then let's load our quick share file. So where is it? It's on user share. Uh, where are we going to our word lists, I believe. Word list, and then Durbuster. And then we'll load up our quick. Uh, let's do the medium. Let's do a medium. And then file extensions. We can probably do a PHP extension or uh, let's go HTML. Let's see what it comes back with. The directories, that's fine. And then I think there's another. Let's finish the map. Oh, there it is. Oh, cool. All right, cool. So let's see if that finds any directories underneath there. So all this is going to do is quickly do a directory attack. So we've got a couple of directory subdirectories that have come up just really quickly and they've come up. So what I want to see is, is, is there anything that we can potentially find or break or is that our Firefox? Let's go to this one. Let's see what we can find. Slash doc. It's in there. It's nothing. What's this test? PHP. Okay, so it's a test page. Looks like it's nothing. All right, so it looks like there's pretty much nothing here. Sometimes there's information here, guys. So looking at the directories that are not listed on the actual website. You know, admin pages, you know, PHP pages. Uh, what's this one? Usage index. Okay, some sort of statistical stuff. Um, that's okay. So we've attempted that. There's nothing there. Uh, what I might even do as well, let's see if I can kill this page. What we've just done before we've killed the main page. Let's see if we can do an additional curl on this TH on this test PHP page. Um, let's just control C, let's break that. Let's clear the page. Uh, let's go curl. This index, this index page? No, it was the test.php page. Uh, let's go curl. Test.php. Do you want to make sure that this is an actual test page handshake failure? Ah, oh, HTTPS. Yes. That's my bad. All right, cool. So that's a test page in there. That's fine. All right. So it looks like there's nothing there. Um, I think we should have kept that page. Here we go. That was just a little bit slow. I think we're just a little bit impatient with our request. So that looks like it's worked. So the net discover command, guys, is just a quick up broadcast out to, to identify all the hosts uh, on the network. So I've got a couple of hosts that are live now. 
Um, just very quickly to see what I, what I know is on my network. So I know that these devices are on here. The one and the 104 is obviously a unique one. So that's definitely Cooptrix that's running. Um, I'm going to close this. I am going to do another port scan, and I think that's good practice. We should keep that open. <laughs> and that's my uh, my my bad. I should have left that open because I didn't know what SMB and what protocols and stuff were open. So let's just do that again. So let's go quick T4, tag A. Uh, let's go tag 4, 102, 104. All right, let's go more aggressive. Tag A, tag P. Let's go 22. So I think the first thing next is let's check out this SMB version. So sorry, this SSH version or even SMB. Let's check out what SMB version that's running uh, on this 139 port. So SMB is running on there for sure. Um, We'll use Metasploit, we'll fire up Metasploit and we'll just do a quick recon on that SMB server. All right, let's go, come on. So while that's cooking, let's fire up Metasploit. Woo. You love doing these things with uh, MSF console and fires up all this amazing art. All right, cool. So the scans are done. That's amazing. All right, let's get on with it. So first things first, uh, let's see what SMB share this potentially is, what version it's on. Right now, we don't know what it is. So let's see if we can potentially break it or if we can get more information out of it. So. Uh, let's do that. So let's fire up the auxiliary scanner um, and then we'll see if there's any information actually, uh, with that SMB share. So auxiliary scanner SMB uh, and then we want to see the SMB version. So um, if you're not familiar with Metasploit, we're going to cover it in more depth in you know a bunch of videos down the track. Right now we're just doing a quick uh, walk through with Kyoptrix, so don't fuss too much over Metasploit and you know understanding it all. It's a it's a really cool exploitation framework. Um, we're going to cover it in more depth, you know, as we progress together. So just take it all with a grain of you know a grain of uh, you know just go along with the ride, follow my lead, you know, and then we can jump on later and do some live things together. So. Um, right now, all we're going to do is just use the, the scanner auxiliary module within Metasploit to do a quick SMB share, to just basically do enumeration on that SMB. So we're going to use, we want to identify what that SMB version is, if there is any, if it's going to give us any information, uh, and that's what we're doing right now. We're going to use Metasploit to, do, to help us do that. And so what we want to do is use the auxiliary scanner module, SMB, and then we want the SMB version uh, attack. So where's SMB version? Here we go. So this one. So I want to use that SMB underscore version. Cool. So let's see what options we need to pop in. Um, so it's saying, hey, you need to set up your remote host, and then you also need the the threads as well. So let's go ahead and put in those parameters, uh, and we'll see what what we potentially get back. So set our host is your Kyoptrix machine dot one dot one oh four. In my case, so that's set, show options. So I just always like to verify things because sometimes things will not be put in correctly or there's an error and then you run the command and then it just falls over. So uh, that looks cool. Uh, so you can just run run or you can run exploit, whatever makes you feel cool or fancy. Just run run and let's see if that gives us anything back with that SMB share. Hopefully we'll get a version out of that so we can see what version it's on. SMB version share, here we go. So it's 2.2.2.2.1a. So we can do a couple of things now. Now, with the, now that we know what that version is, uh, we can do a couple of things. So uh, let's get out of, so we've got that share, SMB 2.2.1. Get 
get that out. Uh, let's use search ploy, so the internal database here on Kali, and then let's just do a quick research for Samba 2.2.1. That don't work. That's what maybe I'll see. What I want to do is I just want to verify something. We're running on an Apache box, aren't we? So if we've got an Apache, yeah, it's in this box. So that's fine. Before we do that, I just want to try something else. Let's see if we can get anything out of that SMB share while we're at it before we go into the to the summer. So MBT scan, let's go one of the two. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to use MBT scan. Um, and let's just see if we can see uh, if we can scan for any open net files name servers. So it uh, looks like it's given us that. So let's Pretty much fine. That's basically saying that this is some share. It's fine. All right, cool. So that looks fine. So it looks like this trans to open is the overkill. So that's what we want. So let's go back into MSF console and then let's try running that exploit against the host and we'll see if it breaks it. Because it's a Linux box, so we should be able to run the code execution straight onto that box. Then we should be able to run this one. It should be fine. Anything under 2.2.8. So Linux or BSD, that's what we want. So let's do a quick look for uh, what do we want to look for? Um, I'm not sure if Samba is going to work. Let's go. Uh, oh, that's a little bit messy. There we go. Trans to open. Can we use this one? And the Solaris. A quick search for um, so we want this one. So this exploit because we are going to exploit a Linux box. So as you can see, it's an Apache Linux machine. So that verifies that for us. 
It's running on 1.3.20. All right, cool. Let's see if we can run this against the host and see if it, uh, if it breaks it. So let's use that exploit. So use exploit Linux Samba trains to open. All right, cool. So let's do our options. So we need the remote port, that's fine, and the host. So let's set our host. So this is going to be one of two six options. So that looks fine. Let's run it and let's see if it does anything fancy. So there's a couple of things. It looks like it's it's getting there, but it's also breaking. Uh, so it looks like something, something's wrong with that interpreter session. Hmm. Let's, uh, sometimes there's an issue with running these, um, these specific uh, payloads there. So let's switch over to maybe a more of a generic one. Uh, let's do that. Let's change the payload. So let's go set payload. Uh, is it generic? Let's go shell. Let's use the reverse TCP. Generic shell. So we're using that exploit. I think there was just maybe an issue with that potential exploit there. Uh, so we'll use the more of a generic shell. Let's see if that will break that. That's looking like we broke it. Ooh, we've got it. Awesome. So it looks like we've rooted and we've broken Keoptrix. So uh, that's our very first and easy exploit. Um, there's probably another way we could have exploited that as well. Uh, we probably could have compiled, I think, another exploit if we've done some more research as well. So it doesn't really matter how we've done it, but it looks like we've, we've broken it essentially. So um, that's essentially it, guys. So we've compromised Keoptrix level one, um, nice and easy. So let me know what you guys thought in the comments. Um, uh, if there's anything else you want to view, essentially that's what we're going to be looking at in the next couple of videos as we continue in this course of penetration testing with Kelly. Uh, we're going to go into more depths of these staged payloads. Uh, you know, once we have access to it, what else is there that we can get? Can we dump credentials? Can we get the Etsy password locations or the Etsy shadow? start looking at things like that, dumping the hashes, breaking the hashes. Uh, this is all gonna be the fun that we're gonna talk about later on. So, you know, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If there's any other comments or thoughts, uh, information that you sort of wanna know more about, let me know. Um, this has been fun. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and now I know someone sort of messaged me saying, you know, why did you run that payload, the initial, um, so why did, I, why did this not work? I don't know why that didn't work, but I don't think, so the reason I wanted to run the unstaged payload, so this payload right here, the generic show, it's not staged. So as you can see, all this slash slash reverse underscore TCP means that you know it's an unstaged payload, it's not all in one parameter. Um, we don't have to worry about it getting sort of interrupted you know, once you export that vulnerability, because sometimes when it comes back, it might break, Based on the underscores and some issues with those with those payloads when you create them. So having it unstaged, we don't need to worry about it getting interrupted with that session. Um, sometimes there's issues running payloads, specifically inside interpreter payloads around Linux systems. Uh, some of the functionalities usually get, you know, there's always issues doing some stuff. So researching it, understanding it, why it's reacting a certain way or what it's doing, why it's doing that. Um, it's just with trial and error guys. So, you know, there's a payload that gets run, you know, it doesn't work. Why, you know, and then just researching why it doesn't work. Um, 
is the only way to sort of know. Um, let's see what else we can do on here. If there's anything else that we can do, let's see if we can then get access to the root. Um, oops. So we got mail. Okay, let's see if else we can get through there. Harold John in a fist, nobody or it. Nah, let's see if we can just go ahead. So that there's a mail message it's sent. Okay, let's go a little bit deeper and see what else we can get access to. So tap in. Awesome. All right, sneaky. That's weird, yeah. So all we did, guys, was just look at the mail. Looks like there was some sort of mail exchange there. So using those tag header, uh, the mail account, we wanted to see what was in those mail accounts. Um, so it looked like there was some sort of mail information in the spool. Uh, and yeah, and it looks like we've got that, those details. So we've essentially compromised this host. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So we've got access to it. So we've exploited the uh, SMB share. Looks like it was a trend to open and I want to exploit. Uh, we've could have gone to Google and I think later anyway, we'll do more exploitation. So you'll see more of how we do things. We could have gone to Google and just type in, you know, um, number, Okay, exploit 2.21a and then we could have researched more around these sort of exploits so i think the good one would have been through exploit db we could have downloaded uh, or compiled this um payload reconfigured it to to our liking and then run that you know there's no right or wrong there's multiple avenues we could have taken uh it's whatever works i guess you know at the end of the day there's ten thousand ways to skin a cat so um, I hope you found this video useful, guys. Um, it's definitely been a lot of fun from my end to, to walk you through, uh, you know, setting all this up, having fun with it. Hope you've enjoyed yourself. If you have any other thoughts and comments or questions you'd love to ask, let me know. And we'll see you guys all in the next video where we continue this course around penetration testing with candidates. It's been so much fun, guys. Have a lovely day and we'll speak soon.